Today, we are learning how to deal with our potted plants. Now, potted plants are an awesome way to purchase aquarium plants. You know that they're going to be healthier. You know that they're going to be um, already rooted. And sometimes you'll even get a little bit of uh, like aquarium soil, aqua soil as we call it. And that comes loaded with nutrients, uh, which help your plant acclimate to the new home that's been given. And it'll be much happier because it has the nutrients that it's been used to versus adjusting to a different nutrient profile. All right. So you notice that I said that you have aqua soil in here and that your plant likes that. So part of the process of dealing with this is going to be trying to maintain some of that aqua soil for the roots because they should already be grabbing onto it. So what we're going to do is I have a couple different types of plants. Um, this is a hygrophila silicifolia. Some of you may have purchased something similar to this from me. I have a bacopa here. So we have bacopa caroliniana. All right. And then we have a rotala rotundifolia. All of these are plants that you could purchase straight up from me at the swaps. And this is the per this is pretty much the quality you're gonna or the way you're gonna purchase it. It'll be in one of these potted plants. Okay. So when you're dealing with one of these, when you get home, a couple things you want to keep in mind is you don't want to keep this thing out of water and dry for too long. Okay, so if you're gonna be dealing with it maybe you're aquascaping a fish tank or whatever, you're going to want to make sure you keep this thing moist. So something to have nearby, maybe a spray bottle of uh, just some water. It doesn't really matter what. Uh, make sure it doesn't have chlorine in it. So if you get it from your tap, you want to make sure it's just good, clean water. So maybe you just take a bottle of aquarium water and you have it in a spray bottle just for this specific purpose. All right. So then you can kind of you spray those, make sure it stays moist. The other thing is, is plants do not want to be cooked. So when you're holding on to your aquarium plants, grab it by the pot. If you're going to hold on to the stems, don't squeeze or pinch them. When you pinch them, you're actually creating a high heat point. All right. And that'll, uh, that can actually cause some of that plant melt. Okay. So if I take this pinch and I pinch this stem right here, you can actually feel it get soft and it's got like less robustness to it and I bet you any money right there that little stem bit is gonna die off because I did that all right so what we do is we'll just pluck our pot out here and it'll be in something like this all right a big old clump of rock wool and then you can see at the center of it it has some aqua soil here Okay, so the aqua soil is the stuff that if you can, you'd want to preserve some of it. Okay, so you can maybe put it on a plate or something. You can get a pot, little pile of the aqua soil there. Maybe you already have some at home, so you really don't need to preserve the stuff that you have in here. But uh, leave as much of it as you can attached to the roots. Okay, so you see I just kind of peeled away some of that bottom layer of the rock wool. Nice and easy. All right. And you just kind of find the chunks that are looser and just kind of peel them away. The roots will kind of let go. And you want to preserve as much of those roots as possible. All right. So we're taking off those chunks there. Nice and easy. Just being nice and gentle with our plant here. All right. And the thing that you're noticing is I'm grabbing the rock wool and I'm not pinching the plant as much. All right. That's the best way to not cook your plant and make it angry and uh, unhealthy, all right? So what we're doing is we're trying to peel some of these roots away from the rock wool there. Gently, 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 all right? So, and it's okay if you lose a little bit of the, the roots there, all right? So what you can see is I have the rock wool put, pulled off, we have the root bunch there. We have some of our aqua soil in here. So if you wanted to scrape some of that aqua soil up, depending on how much you have left, and then you could kind of create a divot in one of your aquariums. Maybe you scoop it up into your pot here. You know, you save some of that aqua soil, depending on how much you have left. And then you can kind of mat that up into the, uh, the roots there and then bunch it into your aquarium or plant it into your aquarium. Now, the other ones are, um, we have hygrophila and we have bacopa. Now these will work the same way. They're just the same kind of planting. Some of them are even easier to pull out. 
just like that. This one came out really, really easy. Yeah, that rock wool just peels right away. And the reason I plant my plants that uh, in the specific manner I do with the rock wool and the aqua soil is roots are drawn to nutrients, okay? So what I do is I use the rock wool to cap the aqua soil so it doesn't go flying all over the place but the roots aren't really drawn to growing into the aqua or into the rock wool as much now sometimes uh aquarium plant companies will just use rock wool no root no aqua soil and those roots will get really root bound into the rock wool and they're hard to get out and you end up losing a lot of the root mass when you buy those plants and i bet you any money you guys have dealt with some of that when you get these from me the roots are drawn to the aqua soil more than the rock wool. The rock wool is just a basically a delivery device, and the uh, the aqua soil is what the where the roots actually grow into, making it a lot easier to unpack unpack these plants. All right, and then you can, you can actually see in there you have a nice clump of aqua soil, and you could put you could pile that up and maybe reuse it or use it at your uh, in your aquascape at home. All right, see. Now, this is a good example of that. You can see that the roots barely grow into the aqua so or into the rock wool, but they harvest around that aqua soil. They like they're like grabbing that aqua soil, and they're like, "This is mine. I'm not letting go of it." All right, and then the top bit of the rock wool should just peel right off. And this is the specific way that I unpot my plants, or the specific way that I pot my plants to make them easy for you guys to un unpackage them when you get them all right nice and easy and if you have a little bits of the rock wool left attached to your plant no big deal at all all right that stuff will actually um you could just put it in your put it into the substrate and it's fine the other thing is depending on the plants you have like i wouldn't leave the hygrophila in the the pot the pots here but if you had some of the slower growing maybe an anubius or an acrypticorn you can actually leave it in the pot for a while and some of our more delicate plant species are actually grateful for that they um they don't like acclimating as much and if you acclimate on one front meaning if you leave your potted plant in here and it's used to growing in here and then you put it into your aquarium it can get used to growing in the water parameters first and then maybe you can pluck it out after a while out of that pot put it into the soil and it'll have a better chance of acclimating in the soil and it's because it's already used to your water parameters. All right, so let's uh, look into planting all of these plants and uh, some procedures to make that better for you as well. If you guys have any tips that you personally use for aqu potted aquarium plants, all right, if you guys have any tips for, for acclimating aquarium plants or your own little secret tricks, Comment down below. Let us know, guys. If you don't think that the way I did it is correct, let me know. I want to know because we got to brainstorm. We're going to get better together. That's what aquarium keeping is all about. Okay, so here we have an aquarium. It's definitely a mess, but this one's going to be getting a rescape soon. So that's why we're using this for demonstration purposes, all right? I got these beautiful black mollies in here. And those are a present from a friend, Branton Lightcap. Gotta thank the guy again. He's an awesome dude. All right. So we're going to take our plants here. And like I said, we're always being careful to not pinch them. All right. You don't want to pinch them very much. Okay. And you could take these. And since they're rooted already, sometimes people suggest to just float your plants to acclimate them. With these, you actually don't necessarily want to do that. Or you don't necessarily need to. You totally could, but you could take your rooted bunch and plop that right into the dirt. All right, super, super simple. All right, just like that. And then what you want to kind of do is pat down your substrate if you have sand, pea gravel, whatever. And what's nice about the rooted bunches is they stick much easier into the ground than just a, uh, like a stem cutting. Sometimes you just buy these plants that have just stem trimmings and it's a lot harder to get them to stay without floating up to the surface. This is it. I mean, this thing is just gonna start growing. 
You're going to see new growth, I bet, within a week. Sometimes there's more of an adjustment period depending on the water parameter differences. I have really hard water, so my plants actually tend to benefit from softer water, which most people have. So, yeah, it actually makes the, uh, the acclimation period even easier for you guys. Okay, so we have another plant here, Bacopa. All right, like I said, we're not pinching it. We're just kind of holding it, showing it nice and easy. You can even break up these stem bunches, okay? So I planted that one as just one big stem bunch. But say you want to plant a stem right over here. You could do that. Get those roots right under the ground there. And then you want to keep this as a separate one. And we're going to spruce up this back corner over here, maybe. You could do it like that. Okay. Well, I may be making some mistakes that you guys might notice. All right. And maybe you don't. And this is some stuff to point out. So if I plant our new plant closer to a plant that's already established, it's going to have to fight for more nutrients. All right. Now, I would personally any of your newer plants, try to give them as much space as possible to kind of let them spread out and establish their own territory, if you will. Plants just like fish need to get their, you know, their territory established. So I think it's a good idea to give um, any new plants nice, easy space to grow in. All right, so now these are our hygrophila. Now, to be honest, this one isn't looking the greatest. I probably wouldn't have sold this to anybody. But we're using it for an example here. So check that out. We've got a nice healthy root bunch. And just like the other ones, we can throw this in there. And plant it just like you would any other plant. Just shove those roots nice and deep in there. Make sure they're covered up. Now, if you had any of that aqua soil left over, you kind of just make a divot in the ground. All right. And what's neat about aqua soil is it's made to sink. Okay, so you can see that this is a mess. This is why I tell people I would do an aqua soil tank over any other substrate. I wouldn't use dirt ever again. But so see, we have this like nice little divot in the ground there. And what's cool about aqua soil is these mollies are probably going to try to eat this, but it's just dirt. But aqua soil is made to sink. So it'll sink straight down. And you notice how it went right into that divot. So if you wanted to plant and you didn't want to use all aqua soil, maybe you have some sand already, you can just make a divot in the sand and then just kind of drop your aqua soil straight down into that sand. You can cover it up. And it's actually a nice, easy way to add nutrients to your soil. Maybe you can also buy uh, root tabs or whatever, but I would always say just buy a, buy a bag of aqua soil. It's so much cheaper. If you use the Petco app, you can usually get a bag of uh, fluval stratum for 15 to $20, um, which you could do multiple tanks with, or you could just keep reusing as, like I said, like a additive for your soil to just add a little bit of nutrients. Okay, so now you know how to deal with a potted aquarium plant. Maybe you bought it for me, and that is super awesome, and I'm very grateful for your help and your support for my little side hustle here. Thanks for watching this video. Comment, like, subscribe if you got something out of it. Um, yeah, thank you. Have a good one.